We put trash in the bin. Uh, what happens after? Municipal solid waste, or trash, is the unwanted material we discard. The majority of municipal waste is paper, yard debris, food scraps, and plastic. Paper is the largest component of our solid waste, even when you account for recycling. And the majority of that is due to packaging. Why do things come in boxes? Chips are sold in a bag, right? Cereal is sold in a bag that's in a box. What is the box for? Okay. All the trash is sent to a sanitary landfill where waste is buried in the ground or piled in large engineered mounds. Landfills have a few features that help keep the trash isolated from the environment. For one, landfills in the United States at least cannot be built around wetlands near any earthquake prone faults and must be at least 20 feet above the water table. Landfills are isolated from the soil with a thick layer of impermeable clay. Above that, they have a thick plastic liner to keep contaminants from leaching out, followed by a layer of gravel. Below all the trash, there's a series of pipes that absorbs leachate, which is the liquid that exists as part of waste in a landfill. This is usually a result of rainwater entering the landfill and kind of seeping through the trash, but it is also due to the natural decomposition of organic material, along with other liquids and chemicals that have been discarded. Rainwater passes through the waste in the landfill, and if the landfill is not properly lined or the leachate is not properly managed, it is at risk of contaminating the groundwater near the site. The leachate is collected and treated on site. Landfills also have a well to monitor the groundwater to ensure that no leachate is leaking through. The decomposition of organic material also creates methane gas, which is a much more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Commonly, this methane is just burned off, which well, produces carbon dioxide, but it's not as bad as methane. After a landfill is full, it is capped with clay and soil, and usually something is grown on top of it like grass. One issue we have with landfills right now is that the total amount of waste that we're producing is increasing, which puts a lot of pressure on landfills, so other methods of waste disposal must be used. Solid waste can also be disposed of through incineration where the waste is burned. This method significantly reduces the amount of solid waste produced, but releases air pollutants, and the leftover ash is considered hazardous waste. But the burning perhaps is not all bad. See, when the waste or the methane that is collected from the decomposition of trash is burned, that can be used to produce energy. A waste to energy facility uses the heat produced by waste combustion to boil water to spin a turbine, you already get that idea. That said, building a waste to energy facility is expensive and it's generally not profitable for a long time after its construction. Because building sanitary landfills is expensive and waste management can be difficult, some countries dispose of their waste by just dumping it into the ocean. This is a common practice in China, Indonesia, Philippines, and Thailand. This continues to add to the garbage patches in the oceans, which endangers wildlife. Some items are not accepted in sanitary landfills and may also be disposed of illegally. One example is old rubber tires, which when left in piles can become breeding grounds for mosquitoes that can spread disease. Side note for the kids. The rubber tire piles is a meme in the environmental science teacher community. Waste to energy facilities and many industrial manufacturing plants produce hazardous waste, which needs to be disposed of differently. And there's a few ways that can be done. Liquid hazardous waste is disposed of in a surface impoundment, which are these shallow depressions lined with plastic and clay. The goal here is to let the liquid component evaporate out and then the solid hazardous waste is disposed of safely. Hazardous waste can also be disposed of using deep well injection, which injects hazardous waste well below the water table. This is a long-term disposal method that is mostly safe, but the well itself may corrode and leak waste into the soil. But the actual, like, stuff is, it's fine. Nuclear waste also needs to be disposed of in very special ways. Now, low-grade nuclear waste from hospitals, 
like equipments used for PET scans or radiation treatments, those can be disposed of in near surface sites. They look very similar to landfills, except they also include concrete vaults to prevent any radiation from escaping. High grade nuclear waste, however, is a bit more challenging. Short term storage of these is held on site in nuclear power plants and giant concrete lined pools of water. Long-term disposal of most nuclear waste in the United States is stored in Yucca Mountain, a very isolated cavern in Nevada. There are some concerns about Yucca Mountain, however. Uh, its safety as its storage site is in question. The repository is somewhat close to a water table, and the rock the mountain is made up of has many cracks and fissures, and it's a little porous. The area is also volcanically active and prone to earthquakes, which would be bad, but for the most part, we haven't had any big disasters there. Electronic waste is its own special category. E-waste is composed of discarded electronic devices, including TVs, cell phones, and computers. E-waste contains many toxic metals, plastics, and synthetic compounds that are toxic to humans and also have environmental effects. All of these waste management facilities are regulated by the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, or RECRA. This law seeks to prevent illegal dumping, maintain the safety of the environment around disposal sites, and mandates that companies that produce hazardous waste to track it cradle to grave by requiring them to keep a paper trail of how waste is produced, transported, and then safely disposed of. But what if an area is already contaminated with hazardous substances? Uh, globally, there are thousands of areas of former military bases and industrial zones that are contaminated with hazardous waste. For that, there is the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, or CERCLA. Sometimes the law is just simply called Superfund. What it did was establish a federal program to clean up United States sites polluted with hazardous waste. Because there are many of these sites, really only sites that are close to human habitation with risk of the waste spreading and contaminating drinking water are funded to be cleaned up. Now, CERCLA relies on the polluter pays principle, but the issue here is that many times the responsible party for the pollution cannot be found or no longer exists. A single CERCLA Superfund site may cost up to $25 million and take 12 to 15 years to clean up. The best way to prevent any waste problems is to reduce the amount of waste that is produced to begin with. The common adage, reduce, reuse, recycle, is not an arbitrary order. It is the preferred order of actions that should be taken for managing waste. Reduce the amount of things you throw away. If you can't reduce the amount of stuff you buy, can you reuse some of the things you buy? And if you cannot reuse it, then recycle it. Recycling is a process by which certain solid waste materials are processed and converted into new products. Recycling is one way to reduce the global demand on minerals like aluminum or iron, but this process is very energy intensive and can be costly. E-waste can be recycled too by extracting the metals in the circuit boards. In many states, it is actually the law to recycle any e-waste. And you'll find these sorts of bins near many storefronts that accept electronics for recycling. Composting is the process of organic matter, such as food scraps, paper, and yard waste decomposing. The product of this decomposition can be used as fertilizer. There are some drawbacks to this, like odor or potentially attracting rodents, but a well-managed compost pile won't be very noticeable, and if it's closed, you won't have the rodent issue. This video wraps up the eighth unit on aquatic and terrestrial pollution. We're getting closer to the end here, team.